Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hey guys, just wanted to do a quick video today on several tips I can give you to help you with your sub bases. And when I say sub bases, it's that low note that typically is created with a sine wave. Sometimes it's an 808, but generally these sounds are made of a pure sine waves. It's that transparent, clear bass sound, usually found as an undertone on bigger bass sounds, right? So the first tip is using the right notes. Now, when you're writing a bass line, you'll be using notes across a range. However, the lowest I typically would go in a range would be D, so this note here. Now, depending on which synth you use, that could be D0 or D1, but it should sound like this. So typically in a bass line, that's the lowest I would go. Uh, sometimes I would play higher. Sometimes the lowest I would go maybe would be an F or a G. But that's a general guideline. So I typically wouldn't have my lowest note in my bass line, for example, be an A, because if that's the lowest I'll go, I'm limited in terms of the number of notes I can go up for that sub bass to hit, right? Now, nothing wrong with that. There are tons of tracks written in the key of A. But this, that's just a general rule. If I want my sub basses to hit, just make sure it's within that range between D to A in terms of the lowest note. It can go higher. Like, for example, you might have a bass line that plays from, let's say, E0 all the way to um, D one right and that's fine because as long as you have some notes that hit in that lower range you're good because you want that rumbling of that sub bass in your track to happen once in a while as long as it plays right okay and the next step is using pitch modulation to create an attack on the sub bass now you can do this with the envelope or with an LFO. I like to do it with the LFO. I find it gives you a little more control. First thing to do is activate the envelope mode of the LFO so that it only cycles once. Otherwise, the LFO will re repeat indefinitely. And then we go into the matrix and apply LFO 1 to your uh, pitch, or for Serum, it's the global master tune. And the amount can be anything above zero. The higher you go, the stronger the attack. Now, make sure the shape is a triangle shape like this. And then turn off BPM mode. You want it to sync to the uh, hertz. Okay, so the faster the rate, the more sharper the attack. And the slower the rate, you get more of that. More of that drop bass sound. Now, currently the LFO isn't working correctly because we're on bipolar mode. So anything below the midline will make it, well, we're on plus 20. So anything below the midline will make it negative 20. So we want it to make it sound right. Just make it unipolar mode by uh, clicking on this type button. So now it's going forward only once. And now that sounds right. Now you can play with the amount. The higher the pitch, the more sharper the attack. And so the main parameters is the amount and the speed of the LFO, right? Sometimes like a saddle pitch is enough, like even three. You just want that attack. Now, sometimes your sub bass might get some clicking. You might need to increase the envelope one, which is the amplitude envelope, to about five milliseconds. So you get a bit of that fade in, so it doesn't click. Okay, so that's this nice sounding sub bass. Maybe we can increase the uh, pitch amount a little more. So that's punching a lot better. Okay, the second tip we kind of spoke about already, it's adding a slower pitch modulation. So you can add LFO2, make it an envelope as well, turn off the BPM mode, assign LFO2 to the 
master tune. And then make sure this is uni mode. And this time maybe around four or even seven might be enough. So you want that slower pitch slide. This is a little more optional. This just gives you that more of that jungle bass sound, right? But yeah, use a combination of slow and fast pitch modulation. Uh, slow one's optional, fast one gives you that attack. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. If you're a beginner, you wanna learn the basics of music production and Ableton, then make sure you check out my Ableton Essential Exercises on Skillshare. I have a series of five classes where you'll learn the basics of drum programming, cutting up breaks, and also writing bass lines. And I just added some new additions to my Chopping Breaks 101 class. So if you wanna get a few more advanced tips on cutting up breaks, make sure you check out that class. For those that don't know, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes to help you improve and expand on your creativity and passions. In addition to their music production classes, I encourage you guys to check their graphic design, marketing, and even video editing classes. All essential skills for a musician today. The benefit of Skillshare is that there are no ads and the first thousand people that use my link in the description will receive one month free trial of their premium membership. So check it out and I'll see you at my class on Skillshare. Okay, another tip is actually using the LFO as a repeating LFO and then modulating various parameters. The first parameter is modulating again the pitch. So let's use LFO three this time. Again, let's choose master tune and let's move it up to maybe, uh, let's make it four. And this time we want it on bipolar modes because we want it to hover uh, above and below the center line. And then just, and we do want it to be a repeating LFO this time. And then you can just experiment with the rate. Uh, I would typically keep it synced to BPM so you get a rhythmic sound. So the faster you go, the more sporadic sounds, the more sporadic it sounds, and then you can increase the pitch amount. So you might have heard this in some old jungle tracks. Okay, I'm just gonna bypass this for now. Uh, the next one we can do is modulating the volume of the LFO. So that, let's use LFO four this time. And then we'll go to uh, the master amplitude, global amplitude and just increase that amount, probably all the way to 100, so hovers be between zero to 100. So now you got that wobble sound. You could make it a little more pronounced by bringing down the amount. It just makes the bass a little more rhythmic. Again, play with the rate. but you can get some fun results with this. All right, let's bypass this as well. And I'm gonna show you one more shape. Uh, let's use LFO five. And again, this time we will use the global master tune and this time use uni mode and we'll choose an amount of 12. And this time we're gonna use a more shark fin shape like this. So, and then you can play with the rate. Make sure trigger mode is on if you're using it. Actually, let's keep it as envelope mode. So this is, you get this walloping bass because you're going up and then down using the pitch modulation. And the slower you go, right? You get more of that sound. Now you can move the shark fin top, maybe move it closer like that. Look at that, play of the slope. It's 
that gives you some cool results. So shark fin shape using pitch modulation. And finally, uh, sometimes uh, we forget to add shape to our sub bases. So it's just a straight sine wave. And on a big sound system, that could be detrimental because then all you hear is a brick wall of bass and there's no rhythm to it, right? So what you want to do sometimes, not all the time, depends on the sub bass that you're playing. Sometimes you may want to play with the amplitude envelope, bring the sustain down. So now it has more of an amplitude envelope. When you play notes, it's more rhythmic, right? So add amplitude envelope. It just gives a little more character to your sub basses. And you just want to bring the sustain all the way down and then just play with the decay time. Right, and finally, the last trick is adding saturation to your sub bass. Sometimes uh, it's the sub bass is almost inaudible, and you might want to add some additional harmonics so that it is a little more audible on more smaller systems, right? So one trick to do is just pull in saturator and then increase the drive. Now the thing with saturator is as you increase it, you're pushing the, the gain. So you got to balance it with the output here. And you can play with this, this bass knob. This affects the, how the low frequencies are uh, saturated. So now you get more harmonics, right? Now, the thing with saturation is you have to be careful because it crushes that sine wave. So you lose that roundness of the sub bass. So a trick you can do is just balance the dry and wet, right? So you have a bit of that sub bass still. Depending on how much you want it to sound distorted, you play with that bass knob as well as the drive amount. You could also play with the other algorithms. Soft one, soft sign sounds a little rounder. Synoid font sounds kind of cool. That's actually quite nice. That's actually a really nice one. I actually have never played with this parameter before. I'm going to use it more. I learn things too while I do this. I'm going to use this more. Synoid fold. That's a nice sounding sub bass. Yeah, so play with this. Fun stuff you can do with sub basses. All right, so that's pretty much it. Just wanted to show you several tricks you can apply to improve your sub basses, especially for electronic music. It's critical to have proper sub bass. It is really the backbone of this music. So have fun with these tricks. Let me know how you guys do and good luck in the studio. Peace. If you want to support, we got a new preset pack out with some big bass sounds. It's called Wubs and Wobbles. You can check it out in the link below. And while you're at it, you can check out my other products as well. But if you're not ready to buy yet, remember you can download these products for free. Also down in the link below.